Welcome back everyone. It is time for your Healthline 3 segment where today we are talking to the doctors about a very important issue, uh, specifically the deals with men and prostate cancer and some of the side effects with that. And this is also your chance to get your calls answered by the docs free of charge. If you have a question, call in anytime. The number is 318-219-4569. Joining us is Dr. James Noble and Dr. Chris Cephalou from Regional Urology. Gentlemen, thank you very much for being here with us today. Thank you for having us. And, uh, you know, of course, as I mentioned off the top of the show, uh, a very important topic um, when it comes to specifically men, prostate cancer. Um, look, we'll start with you, Dr. Noble. Give us an idea uh, when it comes to dealing with the issue of prostate cancer. We, as soon as you hear the big C word, a lot of people immediately kind of drum back. Makes It's a scary topic. And how, how many people does this affect? Well, we diagnose somewhere between 200 and 240,000 men a year with prostate cancer. And of course, dealing with it starts with finding it. Um, we actually have some um, very, um, I won't say easy things, but um, acceptable things, um, advanced, advanced uh, management techniques. But it all starts with catching it in time, catching it early. We can do so much more for, um, for men if we catch them early. The, um, the task force for disease uh, prevention um, has upgraded the recommendations with regard to prostate cancer screening, PSA, prostate checks. Um, they were kind of down on it, but it is the um, second leading cancer cause of death in men. Wow. Uh, so they've um, asked the uh, primary care doctors to become more aggressive in screening for it. Um, and of course, when they come to us, that's when we start really doing the work. And one of the things we offer, um, and we want to stress to our guys as people come to us and they're a little bit worried what we're going to do. Mm. Um, sometimes it involves a prostate biopsy, and one of the things that I wish to stress to all, all our patients is that we offer pain-free biopsies. Many people have gone to get colonoscopy and they get propofol, which is made famous by Michael Jackson. He didn't do so well with it after a while, but mm -hmm. um, it really is a wonderful drug, and so we offer pain-free prostate biopsies. Very important thing. Um, you know, people obviously don't want to be in pain, especially to get checked out for something um, as scary, uh, particularly scary as cancer. Uh, Dr. Seflu, let's talk about the, you know, when it comes to prostate cancer. We live in a time when it seems like more and more cancer numbers are on the rise. Is that something that you guys are seeing when it comes to dealing with prostate cancer? Are you seeing more and more patients walking through the door? Well, it, it is actually starting to come up right now, the incidence of prostate cancer. It went up in the, uh, in the 90s after the PSA screening test was introduced and we started finding more men with prostate cancer. And then with the regards to the recommendations Dr. Noble mentioned earlier about the questions about the benefits of, of screening for prostate cancer, it actually we started to see a downtrend in the number of new men diagnosed with prostate cancer. Wow, that's good. However, unfortunately, yeah. during that same time, we started seeing a rise in the number of men that presented with advanced prostate cancer, prostate cancer that wasn't actually treatable because they weren't getting screened. Mm -hmm. And so now that the screening started to come back as, as being a positive thing, we are starting to see more and more men coming in the doors with an elevated PSA. And, and I think it's actually important to talk about what, what screening entails. Yeah, so, sure, break that down for us. So screening for prostate cancer involves two basic things. One is a simple blood test that can be done that is for PSA, which stands for prostate-specific antigen. It's, it's a, a molecule in all men's bodies. The, the prostate makes PSA at a normal in a normal time, so every man has a certain level of PSA, and a, a normal is very different from person to person. Younger men have lower PSAs, not to pick on you, older men have higher <laughs> PSAs, um, and, and different ethnicity, uh, different races have different, mm -hmm. different levels of PSA, so it's, it's not just a, a simple this is normal, this is abnormal, but prostate cancer makes more PSA than a normal prostate does. So if we see a, an elevated PSA, that raises a red flag that maybe we need to look a little bit closer. But then the other test is actually a, a physical exam, a, a rectal exam, which is usually more intimidating to, to most men than a blood test. But it's important because there are some prostate cancers that don't make PSA, and you can find very aggressive prostate cancers with a sip, simple physical exam that you wouldn't find otherwise. Mm -hmm. When you were talking about the levels of PSA, um, is it as simple as if uh, a 25-year-old man walks through the door as opposed to a 65-year-old man? You were saying those numbers can be different, but can you tell based on that number that a, that a younger man may be more at risk? Yes, you can. And so, you know, I don't think many people would recommend screening somebody 25. Generally, for most people, we recommend screening around 40 when you, okay. when you turn 40. 
And you know, I, I usually like to like to tell my patients that no s single number is 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 clear. But for somebody in their 40s, I like to see it less than one, definitely less than two. Uh, in your 50s, I like to see it less than three. In your 60s, less than four. And when you get up into your 70s, maybe even less than five or six would be considered normal. So it does kind of trend up. But even more important than that is is your individual trend over time. So if, if you were getting evaluated and your PSA was always at 0.5, and it was 0.5 year after year after year, and then all of a sudden the next year it went up to one and a half, well, one and a half overall may may not be a, a scary number, but mm -hmm. a jump from, from 0.5 to one and a half is. So that trend over time gives us even more information than any single value. They're pretty interesting when it comes to those numbers. Um, for our viewers out there that, you know, obviously may not uh, have a grasp on getting to you guys and what age they should be doing that but maybe they have some concerns that hey you know I'm I, maybe I have prostate cancer um, what are some of the warning signs when when you got to know I need to get to the doctor to get this checked out there's a lot of nondescript nonspecific urinary symptomatology um, as men get older um, we typically have a slower stream go a little more frequently perhaps a little, a little urgency. Um, this doesn't necessarily mean you have prostate cancer, but it means your prostate's getting larger. Um, we really prefer to catch prostate cancer before you really had any symptoms specific to it. If we're, if we're catching men when they're already having symptoms or problems, as Chris mentioned, we're seeing a lot of guys now, unfortunately, because we, we slack down as a, as a, as a whole medical profession, we, we backed off on screening. So now we're seeing men show up that are advanced. They've got prostate cancer that's causing problems. They weren't caught by screening. Mm -hmm. They showed up because their stream was slowing down horribly and we find that it's because of cancer. Um, but a lot of the symptoms, decreased stream, frequency, urgency, nighttime voiding, these are not specific to prostate cancer. They're, they're probably related to the prostate, but those men should come in and be checked. Okay, and it's not specifically uh, just, you know, when you, when you go to urinate, um, are there any symptoms that can develop you know, there may be erectile dysfunction or something like that. Is that typically a, um, a sign of, well, when you start having problems in the bedroom, hey, this could be an issue with the prostate? No, probably not. Okay. That's, that's something that brings these guys to us. Okay. Um, a lot of the fellows that have um, bedroom problems mm -hmm. uh, will have low testosterone and, and in evaluating them for low testosterone and possibly replacing it, we certainly want to rule out prostate cancer because we wouldn't want to give testosterone to someone who has active prostate cancer. So a lot of fellas show up in our clinic for help with one thing, such as erectile dysfunction, and then as part of their evaluation, we find uh, perhaps an elevated PSA or a, a firm spot on their um, prostate exam, on the digital rectal exam, mm -hmm. and that kicks off the workup. But okay. again, most, most of the guys that have prostate cancer that we diagnose in a timely fashion have no symptoms whatsoever. And wow. I, I think that's I think it's really important to reiterate because that, that's a very true statement. Um, locally curable prostate cancer pretty much never causes symptoms. And so if you <coughs> if you have symptoms of prostate cancer, unfortunately, it's it's probably at an advanced stage. So that's why it's so important to screen for prostate cancer. I mean, the vast majority of my pa my patients will, will come in and be like, well, I, I don't have any problems. Why do I need to go through these tests? I feel completely fine. I com feel completely normal. And, and that's a good sign that you do because if you didn't, unfortunately, you're probably at, a, at an advanced stage. Wow. So th the huge importance here, like you were saying, is obviously getting in and getting those tested before you start having the symptoms. Interesting stuff. Well, if any of our viewers, just another reminder, have any questions for the doctors when it comes to um, prostate cancer or what you need to know when it comes to the testing. Give us a call right now. The number is 318-219-4569. Again, you're watching Healthline 3. And no charge for this, folks, so pick up the phone and give us a call. Um, let's talk, uh, you know, the bat, when someone gets, when you guys determine that someone has prostate cancer, okay. um, it doesn't seem like it's necessarily a death sentence anymore. You're not automatically on the clock. Uh, what are some of the things that people can do to... Um, you know, to treat it. I mean, what can you guys do to treat it? And, you know, specifically, you know, how the fact that this isn't a death sentence anymore. Let Chris take this. This is kind of what he does. Well, um, I, I think it's important to note that prostate cancer, even though it is cancer, it comes in a, a wide variety of forms. We've got very 
low aggressive cancer that we almost don't even want to call cancer anymore. We want to call it maybe something atypical because we don't necessarily have a huge concern that that's a lethal form of cancer that's going to catch up with you and we would actually encourage just watching it, not doing anything about it all the way up to really advanced cancers that, that behave very aggressively, more like other dangerous lethal cancers that we will literally throw just about everything at, surgery, radiation, hormone therapy. And then the vast majority of people are somewhere in the middle. They have the intermediate risk type of cancer, and, and those patients have all kinds of options out there. There's three main, main types of treatments. One is watching the cancer, which involves every so often doing a PSA, sometimes repeat biopsies, MRIs of the prostate to make sure it's not progressing and that it's staying stable. Um, surgery is, is a very good treatment modality for a lot of patients. You go in and you remove the prostate and the cancer and, and hopefully that's all you need. And, and then radiation, which is a, a term that includes a lot of different types of therapies. Radiation uses some form of energy to kill the cancer cells. Um, uh, and, and all three are great options, and there's even more options than that. There's ultrasound treatments, there's freezing treatments, there's new treatments being developed every day, uh, and, and we, we can offer all of those to all of our patients. Wow, it's nice to know that there's a wide scale. It's not you don't just immediately jump into, no. you know, mm -hmm. s surgery isn't always the, the last and final thing. No. So, um, you know, one question I'm sure that some of our viewers may have is, you know, why does a man get prostate cancer? Does it come to genetics specifically, or are there, you know, life cir circumstances not eating our fruits and veggies at a younger age? What causes this? Well, it's it's a it's probably going to be a combination of all. There's definitely some genetic influences, and we clearly know that that people who have first degree, second degree relatives, or a strong family history of other types of cancers, even uh, have a higher risk of prostate cancer. Unfortunately, African American men also have a higher risk of prostate cancer. But then there's also environmental things, a healthy diets, uh, not smoking, you know, taking care of yourself in general. It's good for all kinds of things in the body and, and cancers in general, including prostate cancer is one of them. So it, it's going to be a combination of, of genetic factors, environmental factors, and, and unfortunately, sometimes it's just bad luck. Yeah, certainly is. Um, but again, you know, we just want to stress, too, that it's, it's not a death sentence. Um, you know, I have had a family member, actually, as a matter of fact, deal with prostate cancer. And when they immediately found out, you know, nobody likes to hear the fact that they have cancer. But the fact that there is such a wide range of treatment options, I'm sure that definitely makes a lot of patients feel a lot better when it comes to this. Um, once again, we're talking to Dr. Chris Cephalou and Dr. James Noble from Regional Urology. And today's topic, as you've been listening, of course, is prostate cancer. So if you want to give us a call right now to Healthline 3, that number is 318-219-4569. You can also check us out right now on ktbs.com. Um, let's talk about, you know, the preventative measures. Um, you know, we kind of mentioned the fruits and veggies and stay away from smoking. But, you know, for maybe some of our younger viewers or even older ones at that, that right now they don't have prostate cancer, they know they don't, are there certain things that they can do to stay off the grid and kind of stay away from your guy's office? We do have a saying, and it is if it's good for your heart, it's good for your prostate. Okay. And um, the, the data is suggestive that heart healthy diets and, you know, that what that means is changing. Um, but the, the, the good oils, the good fats, low sugar, um, and also lifestyle um, of activity. Um, we seem to have uh, some very good correlation graphs between like cholesterol level and incidence of prostate cancer. The lower your cholesterol, the less likely you are to have prostate cancer. Now the cholesterol is not causing the prostate cancer, but some of the lifestyle, um, lifestyle changes or li lifestyle um, features that cause bad cholesterol tend to lead you towards um, a higher incidence of all cancers and prostate cancer being one of those. So if it's good for your heart, it's good for your prostate. Some good advice there. Um, you know, I, I maybe should ask this right off the bat. Um, for those that don't know exactly what the prostate does in a man's body, uh, can you break that down sure. in simple I, terms? It, it, it's quite simple. The prostate is, is simply there to help nourish sperm. So it aids in reproduction. Um, it produces some, some enzymes that help in that regard, and that's pretty much all it does. After your past reproductive age, once you don't want to have kids anymore, you don't really need it. Just okay. baggage. Yep. Just baggage. Interesting. And that's kind of why, you know, when you have an organ like that in your body, once it doesn't have that use, is that typically why we start seeing the numbers increasing in older age? 
That's a, that's an interesting thought, but I don't know that that's necessarily true. Okay. I, I think it's just the fact that that as you get older, more more alterations in your genetics happen over time, sure. and so you're just more predisposed to not only that type of cancer but other cancers as well. Um, so no, I don't I don't think it's a lack of use. Although there's been people who've tried to study that to show that if you use it more, it decreases your risk of prostate cancer. No, so somebody that has 15 <laughs> kids, it's not necessarily they're more prone because their prostate not maybe got a little more use. Not or necessarily. Like that. We haven't found that to be the case, but why take the chance? <laughs> yeah, good advice. And uh, you know, let's let's to talk about um, really want to stress the preventative measures that guys can take. Um, it, you said, let's go back to the age. When should guys uh, come in to see you guys and start at least having the discussion over prostate health? Well, it depends. Um, let's take a fellow who is African American, whose father had our early diagnosis of bad cancer. He should probably start coming in at 40 and doesn't necessarily have to come in every year after that, but a, an examination and a PSA at 40, if they're both, if they're very favorable, we would probably talk to him about how, well, going forward how often we need to check him. The other end of the spectrum might be someone uh, from a lower risk um, group, um, perhaps an Asian American with no family history and no symptoms. He might want to come in at age 50 for a checkup. Again, the PSA, digital rectal exam, depending on what we find there, we'll discuss what his ongoing um, needs are. Interesting stuff, and we'll talk about some of those treatment options um, in just a bit and some of the preventative measures that you guys actually do for some of the patients. In the meantime, we'd like to throw it to our phone lines right now. We've got our first caller, Dennis, on the line. Dennis, you got a question for the docs? Hello. Hi, Hi Dennis. Dennis. Hello. Hello. Uh, I'm 58. I'm trying to see, is that a good age to keep getting the level checked at either if it was elevated to, to like a eight and then the uh, next time it went down i don't understand how it went down instead of up not psa that's a good point dennis some guys have an elevation in their psa and then when we check them later it's come down one possible reason for that is there might have been some inflammation in the prostate um we're worried about telling people to ignore it even if it comes down if it doesn't come down all the way to normal we're still concerned but the PSA is not a great test. It's the best we have, or at least it's a component of the best test we have. But there's plenty of false negatives. So if, you had a, if you're 58 years old and you had a PSA of 8, I would definitely want you seen by a urologist. And we might need to do some further testing, perhaps not a biopsy. We might do an MRI and see what's going on. Yeah, and I, I, I would... I okay. I'd, I'd uh, are you a, Sorry. Do, 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 do you take metals, K? at your center? We take Medicare um, and most insurances. Um, the Medicaid patients are, uh, typically go to LSU. Um, they have an excellent urology program. Um, but uh, definitely need to get a checkup. And your family practice doctor uh, can give you some, some great advice on this. I, I was going All to right. point out that you, you asked a question about whether or not you I, need to I, keep I appreciate it. your answers and uh, thank you very much. All right, thanks, Dennis. Go ahead, Dom. I was just going thanks. to talk a little bit about the fact that he, he asked about when to stop screening, which is actually an important thing because we generally have a rule of thumb that if we think you're, you've got less than 10 years left to live, um, that routine screening is not necessarily indicated. That doesn't mean if you have an elevated PSA, we quit, quit looking. But at some point in time, there is, there is a point <coughs> where you can consider stopping. And um, you know, currently, we start saying around 70 is when you start to discuss when to stop the screening. But my general rule with all my patients who are coming in is if, if we get to a point where we think you've got you know, less than 10 years left to live on average, then maybe we can stop screening. Now, that could be very different, but depending on your overall health mm -hmm. um, and your, your family's history. I mean, I've got patients in their, in their 80s who are you know, healthier than I am, it seems, and their family all lives into their hundreds. So, you know, in that patient, you might want to keep an eye on things, but it, it's very individualized. All right, great points there. And uh, again, want to thank Dennis for giving us a call. If you have a question for either of the doctors from Regional Urology, 318-219-4569. Give us a call right now. Still have about 10 minutes to go. So this is the chance that you can get your questions answered for free. You don't often get that in the medical world. So give us a call right now. Um, one thing that I thought that Dennis uh, pointed out is he knew his number mm -hmm. right off the bat. Mm -hmm. um, you know, for, for guys Dennis's age, uh, 50, 60 and older, 
Um, how important is it to have that number um, in their heads and, and to, can you, to continue to monitor it? Well, I mean, I think it's very important to know what your number is. And uh, I, I wanted to try to get at this earlier, but we talk about screening. Screening doesn't usually happen in a urologist office. It actually happens with your primary care doctor. So when you see your, your doctor once a year, that's the place to initiate the conversation about prostate cancer screening. And, and most, most family physicians are very good about talking to their patients about it and the risks and benefits. Um, some may be lacking a little bit, but, but that's, the, that's the original location that you want to start that conversation with. With them, and then you you should keep track of your number and know what your numbers are, just like you do with your your glucose levels for your diabetes or your cholesterol levels, to know where they are and whether you're doing good or bad, and, and whether you should be concerned about it. Hmm, very important stuff. And we're throwing around some terms right now. Um, for anybody that may not know exactly what a urologist is, what an oncologist is, um, could you break down who you know the specialist? Uh, specialist okay. Uh, so specialist urologists specialist. are urologic surgeons, mm -hmm. and so if you have a kidney cancer or a prostate cancer, we would remove it. We also um, diagnose with prostate biopsy, and we see a lot of patients with, with the urinary symptoms. But typically, a urologist is a urine system surgeon. An oncologist is a, a dedicated cancer doctor. Uh, typically, we're talking about a medical oncologist. They give chemotherapy, um, direct, and supervised care. Um, a lot of our patients we work with um, medical and radiation oncologists um, to, to give a, a team approach to care. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to regional urology, I'm sure you guys have a long list um, of medical professionals that can, uh, that can step in and probably for different, um, I guess, steps along the way when it comes to these sure, kinds of treatments. Yeah. And we have various urologists that are specialized in various degrees of, of treatment of, of some of these things. So. We can, it, we can pretty much take care of everything within our system that we need to, and if not, we know who to send you to to see. But uh, kind of elaborate on, on Dr. Noble's point, you know, a urologist deals with the urinary system, the kidneys, the tubes that drain the kidneys, the bladder, the prostate, et cetera. Um, and in that regard, there's some people that specialize even more. Myself, for example, I specialize in urologic oncology, so mm -hmm. I deal with a lot of cancers. So oncology refers to cancer, and that can be treated from a surgical standpoint as I do. It can be treated from a medical standpoint as a medical oncologist would do. It can be treated from a radiation standpoint like our radiation oncologist does. So various degrees of people in the cancer, cancer world can tr take care of you at various stages in your, in your disease process. Um, but, but in our situation, you're talking about the different, different levels of management for prostate cancer. Um, there's very, very little that a patient with prostate cancer in this day and age would need mm -hmm. that they wouldn't be able to get in our office from start to finish. That's incredible. And it's, it's you know, if I'm sure for a lot of guys watching out there, it's, it's good to know because, you know, anytime you bring up the word cancer, it's a scary thing. I'm sure I'm, nobody ha has found out that they may or may not have cancer and then not worried about it. So having that level of care is definitely something that is so important, um, especially at regional urology. You guys are the pros. Um, all right, well, we've talked so much about prostate cancer and, of course, some of the symptoms and what you can do about it, but there is a very special event coming up geared towards getting the funding needed to take care of this problem for the hundreds of thousands of men that deal with it. It's called the Blue Man Run. This sounds pretty interesting. Uh, yeah, break down exactly what well, this event I mean, is. This, is. this is something that's very near and dear to my heart. Um, it, it honestly started a couple years ago when I had a few patients asking me about support groups for, for themselves and their family members because they were recently diagnosed or were dealing with prostate cancer, and unfortunately I didn't have any good answers for them. So it, it originally started as organizing a support group for our, our patients and their families. Um, and through that support group, we've decided that we wanted to go out and reach out to the community and help raise awareness about prostate cancer, kind of like we're doing right now, sure. um, but also to help raise money to support our patients, their families, research, et cetera. And so we decided to organize the, this 5K, basically. Um, and it's a, it's a blue man run. It comes up Father's Day weekend. We've held it every Father's Day weekend for two years in a row now. Um, it's it's going to be in Ashley Ridge behind Outback Steakhouse. It's 8.30 in the morning. You can register at Sports Spectrum. Uh, you can get more information at bluemanrun.com. But the whole, whole purpose of the event is to introduce the community to prostate cancer awareness about the risks and benefits of screening, why it's important to get screened, and then to raise money. And, and one of the nice things about our organization is that 
the vast majority of any funds we raise will stay in this community. A lot of other That's organizations right. will just take money out of the local communities. Sure. They go to the national headquarters and national uh, initiatives. Uh, but 75% of every penny we raise will stay in Shreveport, Bossier City so that we can use it in our community and for our patients and their families. That's incredible. Keeping the money here to help the local people deal with exactly. this important issue. That's great. Big deal. That's awesome stuff. Hey, we're going to talk about Blue Man Run uh, a little bit more in just a minute. I want to go back to the food lines right now. We have Bill on the line. Bill, what's your question for the doctors? Uh, when someone is old and has uh, uh, too much fluid on in their scrotum, uh, is there something simple that can be done about it, or does it have to be done as something major? And someone, I'm 85 years old, and I don't want to have too much trouble, and it doesn't bother me, but it worries me that I've got too much fluid on them. Well, I'll take that. Um, so what you're describing probably is a hydrocele. Naturally, you need to be evaluated for that. We need to make sure there's nothing else going on. Um, your options for dealing with a hydrocele are um, Watch it, make sure there's nothing wrong. If it's not bothering the patient, just leave them alone. Um, if a patient has some uh, fluid mobilization issues, perhaps some con congestive heart failure, something like that, uh, we might find tuning that up might help things. Um, if it is bothering a patient and nothing conservative helps it, um, typically we do a fairly minor surgery, although you know, minor surgery is something that someone else is getting. You know, if you're the patient, you don't feel it's very minor. Um, we used to try and drain these things, but they just come right back. So what we would do would be make a small incision in the um, upper part of the scrotum, and we would go in, drain the fluid, and then strip out the um, sac, or the majority of the sac caught that's keeping the fluid in, and that would hopefully prevent the recurrence. Thanks for your question, Bill. We appreciate that. And, of course, uh, got a couple minutes left. Thank you. And if, uh, if you have a question, 318-219-4569, get those calls in right now. Um, you know, let's go back to the Blue Man Run, uh, the fact that this money, this 5K, is going to be keeping the money here in the shreveport Bossier area. Um, how many people take part in this? This sounds like a pretty cool event. Well, last year was our first event. We had well over 200 participants, another wow. probably 100 volunteers and, and uh, people there just to show their support. Uh, this year, I don't know. We're still about two weeks away, so we'll see. I'm hoping for a bigger turnout, um, but I'd like to invite everybody who's watching this, your family, your friends, if you know anybody with prostate cancer, or if you know any man for that fact, they might be at risk, so, so you should come out, and, and it's going to be a good event. We've got a, a 5K. We have a one-mile fun run for those of us, including myself, who don't want to run five <laughs> miles. Yeah. Um, we've got a kids' fun run. Um, all the kids who come out are actually going to get little blue capes uh, with oh, our logo cool. on the back of them, and we're calling it the Super um, Superhero Dash for Dads. Um, and for those people who want to participate but don't want to get out of bed, we've got a snooze for dudes where you can register, get a t-shirt, and, and support the event, uh, but not actually have to come out and do anything. Hey, how about um, that? We're going to have a little area with a bunch of activities for the kids, some face painting, jump houses, etc. And after the race, we're going to have a little uh, a brunch with a band, some live music, um, some, some stories from survivors, and some other entertaining uh, event so we'd love to have everybody out it's, it should be a very good good morning yeah it doesn't sound like it's just a run it sounds like a you know a family friendly event exactly and of course like you mentioned 75 percent of the proceeds stay right here in the Arclitec such an important thing uh, when you consider a large number of the patients well every one of them going to get treated right here in the area so very cool um, you know guys we've talked a lot about prostate cancer the blue man run um, for some of our viewers that may still have some questions once this uh, wraps up in about a minute and a half um, how can they get a hold of you you guys taking patients right now? Absolutely. Our office number is 683-0411. That's 683-INFORMATION. Um, we didn't do that on purpose, but it worked <laughs> out well. Yeah, it works um, out perfect. We're also on the web. Um, um, Regionalurology.com. And we're on Facebook. We're on Facebook. Um, we're what on else? Twitter. I don't Twitter. Twitter, but someone else does. <laughs> yeah, it's like... Um, Someone else does that, right? Yep. Okay. Um, and the Blue Man Run, Blue Man Run's on Facebook, bluemanrun.com uh, for more information about that. And there's ways to submit questions and comments through both of the websites, both, both Regional Urology or Blue Man Run. Uh, Respectively. Okay. It's a very important stuff. And again, we were talking about prostate cancer, the fact that this uh, has an impact on hundreds of thousands of men each and every year. Many here at the Arclitex do. So such an important thing. And just to go back to what uh, you were saying is, is the fact that treatment is probably the biggest and best thing, um, you know, preventative measures. Get in there, get tested, because there's never too soon to take, an, take a look at this important no. issue. No. Not at all. If, if 
It, you don't want prostate cancer, absolutely nobody does. Um, but if you have it, we want to fight it early. We want to get you treated. We want to get you cured and on with your life. All right, Dr. Chris Cephalo and Dr. James Noble. Gentlemen, thank you so much. They are from Regional Urology. They are the pros to talk to if you have any questions about prostate cancer. That's gonna do it for our Healthline 3 segment, folks. Have a great day.